Hi, in this video, we're going to see the ability for the Centrify agent for Windows to manage local users and groups. Uh, and this is done by leveraging the Centrify zone. Uh, let's take a look at my environment. Um, because it's a Centrify zone, I need Active Directory, right? And uh, I have two domain join machines. This one is going to be used for um, my management. And the second one is going to be used to test. So um, as you see, I have uh, a pre-release version of CSS 2020. And um, there's a couple of things that are new. Um, so as you know, we provided this um, the ability to manage uh, local users and groups for Unix since Suite 2016. So um, if, you, if you know about this, just check it out. It's a really cool capability and allows the zone to become the authoritative uh, um, source, identity source for local users and groups on Unix Linux. So in 2020, this has been extended to Windows. And some of the new things that you'll see here is that there's a new Windows data node here. Uh, also, delegations, PowerShell, they have all been modified. And, um, you know, what we'll see here is um, I'll just set up the feature. Um, first and foremost, um, let me just go ahead and create a, a local user. And um, I'm going to call it local demo one, and um, I'm going to set the state to enabled. Notice that you can set different states based on everything. Uh, I'm going to set up the password to never expire just to test any of the attributes. Um, let's create a local, uh, local demo group, group demo one. And, um, and we're going to add our local demo one user. And the state for this is going to be enabled. Notice that since you cannot disable groups, um, the state of disabled does not exist. So, uh, uh, right here, right away, so we have local demo one, group demo one, and local demo one is a member. So let's take a look at the client uh, section of it. So obviously you need to have a, a system that is a domain joined. Um, and I'm logged here with Lisa Simpson. If you look at the privilege elevation service, there's actually a new tab as well. It's called local management. So notice that in this case, I would probably have to configure this manually. Um, uh, uh, but there's also GPO. So if you look at um, the newly, if you add the new GPOs for Windows, you're going to see that there are local account management um, uh, GPOs that allow you to set it up and all that stuff. So this is equivalent to the manual steps I'm going to do here. So in a deployment, most likely you're going to be uh, providing the settings either through the customer's uh, tool like SCCM or using group policy or manipulating the registry. So um, if I do uh, another thing that has changed, so, so this DC flush uh, has a new switch. Uh, it's um, the synchronized local account windows. So if I use it now, uh, minus L, and I want to open the local user manager, and let's just create a quick shortcut here because I need to be able to launch this with privilege because my user doesn't have any privilege and I'm using the alternate account capability, which is super cool. It makes our demos to be way much more uh, least privilege -y. So notice that stock here, this is actually one of my cluster here. So, um, uh, we'll, so it just basically didn't work and it's because the feature is not enabled. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable it. Notice that you have several options here. You have uh, the ability to enable it. You have, uh, if you want to do a enforcing mode in which the zone becomes a true source, so it'll delete anything that it doesn't know uh, unless uh, it's built in. And notification command is the command that is gonna be executed um, when uh, an account is added or removed. For example, it could be to, to vault into pass. And we're gonna see that in another video. And the synchronization interval, which is 60 minutes. In our case, I don't care. I'm just gonna enable the feature. I'm gonna press okay. So the feature has been enabled. So now if I, if I were to, to do the DZ flush minus L, my expectation is that some things are gonna happen. So um, notice here, um, this PowerShell is, hasn't been working because I didn't run it with privilege. So um, uh, 
let me just see if I can browse for it. So file location, and now I'm gonna write with my uh, alternate account, and I should be able now to do the DC flush minus L. So um, right away, if I press a refresh, this is quite fast. Notice that I have um, several accounts that were that were provisioned. Uh, I am pretty sure that I have some sort of override from when I did it last time. So I have uh, some stuff that I created here. <laughs> so let me just go ahead and this is gonna be quick because I'll be able to test the removal. So let's go ahead and remove it. Um, I just want the things from the zone to show up. So if I, if I flush again, uh, I expect one of those accounts to, to just go, the one that is called local user one. So uh, gone, okay. So now we tested the deprovisioning. But um, my expectation here is that there's a group. Here you go, and it's populated with this here. So uh, pretty simple uh, capability uh, from a, you know, a security operations perspective. Let's take a look to see if we're doing the right things like uh, looking at the event log and in the application log, notice that there's several audit trails um, and they just basically notify of a lot of things that have been happening. For example, um, notice that um, I was able to run with privileged alternate account, but then um, uh, the provisioning was happened. So lo local, no, notice that local demo user was added and that, um, you know, there was a removal from this computer. So it actually removed my um, CLI user. So this is why, you know, and maybe I put it in enforcing mode. This is why you want to be do some planning because this would have broken my cluster. So in enforcing mode, it'll, it'll actually remove the things that are not supposed to be there. So, um, uh, the good thing is that this account is going to be recreated each time I, um, you know, I run the clustering service. So the clustering service is smart enough to recreate this account. So, um, you know, the benefit here is that now organizations that have problems with uh, risk avoidance, maybe a threat agent, maybe use local accounts and groups and modify them in, a, in an endpoint or a, or a server, um, they can benefit from this feature. Um, also, uh, customers that are looking to enforce policy. As you know, many many users create local accounts, manipulate lo uh, group memberships. In some environments, that may be a violation of policy. So running in non-enforcing mode um, and notification can help. Uh, enforcing mode is if you want to have a very strict adherence to it. So um, really cool feature, simple to set up, simple to demonstrate in, a, in an evaluation. So I'm hoping that you guys um, Enjoy it.